Hello and welcome students to an another session of poetry and today we are doing Lord Byron's poem There is a pleasure in the pathless woods So I'll give you an introduction of this poem but before I give you an introduction of this poem I would like to introduce you to Lord Byron George Gordon Byron he was simply known as Lord Byron He was an English poet and politician. He was one of the leading figures of romantic movement and is regarded as one of the greatest English poets. And he remains widely read and influential. Among his best known works are the lengthy narrative poems Don Juan and Child Harold's Pilgrimage. and many of his shorter lyrics in hebrew melodies also became popular he traveled extensively across europe especially in italy where he lived for 7 years in the cities of venice ravenna and pisa and during his stay in italy he frequently visited his friend and fellow poet percy bysshe shelley and later in life he joined the greek war of independence fighting the ottoman empire and died of disease leading a campaign during that war for which greeks revere him as a national hero he was born in 1788 and he died in 1824 at the age of 36 from a fever contracted after the first and the second seas of misolongi Byron was the son of the handsome and profligate Captain John, who was known as Mad Jack Byron, and his second wife. After her husband had squandered most of her fortune, Mrs. Byron took her infant son to Aberdeen, Scotland, where they lived in the lodgings on a meager income. And the captain died in France, seventeen ninety one. George Byron had been born with a club foot. and early developed an extreme sensitivity to his lameness in 1798 at the age of 10 he unexpectedly inherited the title and estates of his great uncle william the 5th baron byron his mother proudly took him to england where the boy that is uh, byron he fell in love with the ghostly halls and spacious ruins of newstead abbey which has been presented to the barons by Henry the 8th in 1803 uh he fell in love with his distant cousin Mary Shawworth who was older and already engaged when she rejected him she became the symbol of byron for idealized and unattainable love he probably met augusta byron his half sister from his father's first marriage that same year in 1900 oh sorry in 1805 byron entered trinity college cambridge where he piled up debts at an alarming rate and indulged in the conventional vices of the undergraduates there
Byron's first published volume of poetry, Hours of Idleness, appeared in 1807. It sarcast- a sarcastic critique of the book in the Edinburgh Review provoked his retaliation in 1809 with a couplet, satire, English bards and Scotch reviewers, in which he attacked the contemporary literary scene and this work gained him the first recognition. In Greece, Byron began writing Child Harold's Pilgrimage, which he continued in Athens. Byron's sojourn in Greece made a lasting impression on him. The Greeks' free and open frankness contrasted strongly with English reserve and hypocrisy and served to broaden his views of men and manners. And he delighted in the sunshine and the moral tolerance of the people. Child Harold's Pilgrimage was the poem which describes the travels and reflections of a young man who, disillusioned with a life of pleasure and revelry, looks for distraction in foreign lands. Besides furnishing a travelogue of Byron's own wanderings through a Mediterranean, the first two cantos express the melancholy and disillusionment felt by a generation weary of the wars of the post-revolutionary and Napoleonic era. In this poem, it's a very long poem, and in this poem, Byron reflects upon the vanity of ambition, the transitory nature of pleasure, and the futility of the search for perfection in the course of a pilgrimage through Portugal, Spain, Albania, and Greece. And in the wake of Child Harold's enormous popularity, Byron was lionized in Whig society. He was a very handsome poet. He was swept into Lyzen with the passionate and eccentric lady, Lamb, and the scandal of the elopement was barely prevented by his friend, Hobhouse, and she was later succeeded as his lover lady. Oxford. Lover Lady uh, succeeded as his lover by Lady Oxford, who encouraged Byron's radicalism. So, this is about the poet, and now I'll give you a brief introduction of the poem. Now, actually, we know that Byron had made an extensive journey of European countries and visited many nations. 
and after the completion of his journey he wrote this poem this long poem child harris pilgrimage in four cantos and this poem which is prescribed for you there is a pleasure in the pathless woods it is actually an extract from this long poem so this poem there is a pleasure in the pathless woods is an expression of the poet's love and admiration for nature his style is highly colored and the language is rich in metaphors the poem has the characteristic of an epic and it expresses the thoughts and the experiences of the poet and the ideas of the people of the countries he has visited during his tour so this poem is an extract from canto 4 of the child harold and it constitutes the last nine stanzas of the child harold's canto 4 and in the stanzas which are prescribed for a study there is a pledge of his love of nature nature in all her wealth and munificence nature in all her majesty and incalculable grandeur strictly speaking humans are social creatures and yet the desire for solitude and for silence sometimes feel like one of the most universal human emotions everyone from time to time can benefit from being entirely and purely alone yani humko ekant vas bahut acha lagta hai ekant we love society but still sometimes we feel that hum ekdam akele rahe apne aap mein rahe perhaps this is why paintings and photographs of the natural world are so common and so popular because the feeling of solitude is universally desired in some capacity so when george gordon byron who is popularly known as lord byron he wrote the fourth canto of child harold's pilgrimage he included what he has come to be known as there is pleasure in the pathless woods the 178th verse the much larger poem larger poem is child harold's pilgrimage reflecting a strong desire for solitude and peace it has become one of the most popular short poems not an entirely accurate designation of course but it is still well worth reading on its own so the title of the poem there is a pleasure in the pathless woods is derived from the first line since this was not written as a solitary poem it is telling enough on its own so first uh to say that there is a pleasure in the woods is to say that there is a certain kind of joy in walking the path that others do not when someone is walking on a forest trail anyone can take the same trail but leaving the trail for a different path is making a conscious decision to be alone and to enjoy it actually when you go through the beaten paths jo raste pehle se set hain un raston pe chalne mein wo maza nahi hai jo raste apan khud banate hain so in the very next line the concept of rapture and loneliness are juxtaposed with one another and loneliness is supposed to be a sorrowful feeling but here the narrator is finding intense joy in it so this is a brief idea i have given you of this poem and in my next session i'll take the poem stanza by stanza so thank you very much for your patient listening and i'll be posting i hope you have got the books but still i'll be posting the pdf of this poem on the whatsapp group you read it so that you can understand it in my next session i'll be explaining and analyzing the poem thank you for the patient listening and we'll meet soon